What's going on y'all, it's David or David with another solid Mayhem 10 build for you. This build focuses on overwhelming your enemies with high corrosive damage and then proccing your hunter skills as well as stacking the special flesh melter artifact to dish out even more corrosive damage. Jumping right into it with the skill tree, you'll see that I have a pretty standard flax skill build here. The double capstone of Megavore and the power inside is pretty much the meta right now for Mayhem 10 builds for flak. The skills might like fluctuate depending on the build, but the double capstones are pretty standard. The power inside gives you and your pet a gigantic, much needed damage boost for Mayhem 10 since the modifiers are extremely high. This boost combined with your various hunter skills like Furious Attack and Interplanetary Stalker are just what you need to plow your way through any foe, while Megavore is surprisingly less of a damage boost but more of a utility boost. Don't get me wrong, the fact that you can crit a ton easier does indeed boost your damage dealt, but the important thing is that your crits can return ammo directly to your magazine with Leave No Trace and also reduce your action skill cooldown time with headcount. These two abilities are super important for endgame builds because you can easily run out of ammo in the prolonged fights and your action skill is really important in keeping you alive. Speaking of the action skill, I have seen a ton of Mayhem 10 builds focus on the rack attack interaction with a new shield break at proc annoy and a stop gap, and while that's definitely neat and super strong for Flak, I did want to like challenge myself and step a little more into my comfort zone as a fadeaway player. So along with fadeaway, I use Not My Circus as my first augment and Until You Were Dead as my second augment. Not My Circus is really key in surviving because your pet will draw a large amount of the aggro away from you and Until You're Dead is great for mobility and the health regen. As for my pet, I like to roll with the Spider Ant Scorcher, mainly because she gives such a huge elemental damage boost. I would like to mention here that you most definitely can run this build as a Rack Attack build if you wish, if that's like what you're more comfortable with. I would recommend either going Falconer's Feast or Flock and Load along with Rack Celery for the best outcome. You'll also need to switch your shield if you choose to do this, I'll get more into that in just a bit because I do want to start off with the gear explanation with the guns. So this build features two different corrosive guns and that's pretty much all that you need to get work done for Mayhem 10. The main gun that I use for the most part is the new Plague Bearer launcher with a 300% weapon damage if the enemy's above 90% health anointment. So the Plague Bearer functions very similarly to the Scourge launcher, except at the end of its trail when it impacts an enemy it creates a singularity effect that draws in nearby enemies. Combined with the 300% anoint, you can pretty much shoot this gun off into the air and just let the homing projectiles that spawn do most of the work for you. With Fade Away and the Power Inside combined, enemies have a really hard time surviving the blast from this weapon. Another thing that I like to do with this is shoot it at a certain spot and follow up with another shot at the exact same spot because the first shot will pull in any enemies that survive with the singularity and the second shot should finish them off. The second gun that I like to use is also new and it's the Corrosive Kaosun or Kaosun with the consecutive hits anoint. This gun is a doll SMG, but when it shoots it launches sticky similar to a Torg weapon. These stickies explode after a short time or on reload and deal a surprising amount of damage. I like to use this gun against the Mayhem 10 death modifier enemies because I don't like wasting my launcher shots against them. Also this gun is great if you happen to get knocked down because the launcher just takes way too long if you're running out of fight for your life duration. Since the one that I have is a burst fire, if I shoot it once during fadeaway it uses up all 3 fadeaway shots and procs the various ASC anoints on this build. Now if you're finding yourself dying too much and you just don't want to take the easy way out with a rack attack stopgap combo, then I highly, highly recommend using a soul render with the lifesteal anoint for this build. The Soul Render is another doll weapon, it does high damage and high splash damage, and it uses assault rifle ammo so it doesn't conflict with the other guns in this build. Just swap to this gun when you're low on HP and get yourself right back up there. Now for the supporting gear, I like to use a Corrosive Old God here simply because it boosts my corrosive damage by a large amount. The shock ASC that I chose is also really important because corrosive damage is really bad for shielded enemies, but shock damage is extremely good for shield so it helps balance it out. Like I said, you can use a stopgap here if you choose the rack attack route and trade some damage in for survivability. I also like to use this corrosive mitosis hunter seeker with radiation ASC. While I don't exactly use this grenade for damage, it does fill a gigantic role in the utility for my build. First, the Hunter Seeker is fantastic alongside Megavore because it can crit very easily to proc Leave No Trace and return ammo to your magazine without you even having to shoot. Secondly, the Radiation ASC here not only helps me damage shielded enemies, but also helps for flesh enemies too because of how the elemental damage chart works. Since I will be stripping the enemy's armor and shields really quickly, the flesh health damage is super useful. 
Lastly, radiation is also really key, specifically for the takedown, because radiation is the only type of element that the heavy enemies don't come in, so finding a corroder or storm chucker heavy is not a problem thanks to this grenade. If you plan on using this build or like a variant of it, a hunter seeker with radiation is definitely a must have. Next, for my class mod, there are a lot of good options, but I think that my personal favorite is the friend bot mod because of the points in a barbaric op and the ability to revive your pet from killing an enemy. Even though the pet really does like laughable damage, it's really important to keep it alive in this build for the Not My Circus augment to go off. The stats on this friend bot are splash damage, doll crit damage, and heavy weapon damage. The splash damage helps both of my guns, while the doll damage boosts the Kalsen significantly, and the heavy weapon damage boosts the Plague Bearer significantly. This is also why I recommended the Soul Render for this build, because it would too get a boost from the splash and doll crit damage. Last but not least for this build, I have the all important Flesh Melter Auto Idle. So let's break this artifact down bit by bit really quickly. First, the Flesh Melter means that if I kill an enemy with corrosive damage, which is most of this build, I get one stack of 27% bonus corrosive damage for 10 seconds and this stacks up to five times. Second, the auto idle is really, really good for Flak, who doesn't have any like direct healing because killing an enemy also gives me 20% of my max health restored. Lastly, the stats on this one, AoE damage, action skill cooldown rate, and max size are all super helpful. The AoE damage boosts our damage by a lot, the action skill cooldown rate helps bring fade away back up quicker, and the max size helps us dish out more damage quicker by not having to reload as often. That is actually going to wrap it up for the full Plague Doctor build. If you stick around, I'll briefly go over the general gameplay guide for this build, but if not, I just would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this build, and I hope that it helps you clear Mayhem 10. If you liked this video, please make sure to go rack attack the hell out of that thumbs up button, and make sure to leave me a comment down below or in my Discord, and I will most certainly reply as quickly as possible. So for the mobbing strategy, you pretty much just fade away and let your plague bearer rain down on enemies. Once your fade away is over, it should be back up rather quickly from the enemies dying, so you can just repeat this whole cycle. If you have the death modifier, just switch to the cow sun and take care of those ASAP. Try your best to keep some distance between you and the enemies because Mayhem 10 modifiers are a pain in the ass. And for bossing, if you're planning to just like one shot the boss, just slap on a one shotter shield and hit the crit spot with the plague bearer. But for the like prolonged fights like Wotan or the Valkyries, you're going to want to keep on the move and just use a Plague Bear if the enemy's stationary, then use the Cow Sun if the enemy's moving a lot. That's going to be it for my full Plague Doctor flat guide. Make sure to gamma burst that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on all of my content, and I will check you all in the next video. See ya!